For me, the end was just the beginning. I felt I must come. If I did not come at once, it would be too late. And these places that are watered with the best blood of Canada might only be names and memories. I see it in the soldiers, the grief I know so intimately. And I will not abandon these men to it. The isolation wears on me. Slowly, the silence takes over, as if my heart has given out of air. I cannot talk. I can only paint. For more than two years, Mary Ryder Hamilton painted the battlefields of the First World War, creating an unforgettable visual record of service and sacrifices at immense personal cost. The weather was brutal that morning. Bobbing in the choppy tide, the boys were green with sick and terror. The order comes. They throw open the landing craft's armored doors, their last defense against the inevitable. They plunge into the surf, wading into a wall of machine gun fire and a hellstorm of mortar shells. Those still standing hit the beach, and the beach hits back hard. They crawl through barbed wire, stepping over landmines, 
stepping over guys they'd shared a joke or a smoke with hours before. Somehow, they advance. The beachhead is secured at an incredible cost. 5,000 brave Canadians died in the invasion of Normandy. They gave their lives so our lives could be free. November 11th, the most unforgettable day of the year. A message from the Government of Canada. For me, I would say it's an obligation to remember my friends who passed. When I got back from Afghanistan, Remembrance Day was really hard for me. I always think back to the, the guys that I went to school with that aren't with us anymore. My squadron lost 83 bombers. Eight or nine boys in every plane. To keep their memories ready, to keep their memories alive, to keep their memories uh, with us, we have to remember them. Knowing the sacrifices that some of my soldiers have made, the ultimate sacrifice in some cases. Um, Remembrance Day is, is, is a, it brings it all together for us. Remembrance Day for me is probably the most important day of the year. Any things? Everything. When I went to Afghanistan, um, going out the gate the first time, I was like, this is, this is it. Our death toll for the police was around 70 to 100 police officers a month. They're gone. And I'm here, one of the lucky ones. I rushed in to pick him up, and I stepped on another line, and then I went up. These five Afghan women uh, had walked by. They unveiled their faces, and they, they walked by, and they waved. Them doing that really showed us that we were doing our job and that they didn't have any fear of the Taliban. Whenever I see young people, I educate them, show them what is the importance of uh, being in services. In Remembrance Day, we pay tribute to those 
who stepped up and did what needed to be done. I think the young folks of today have, have got to realize that it's not about warmongering, it's not about, you know, anything like that. It's the fact that, you know, there are so many people in the world that are helpless, that need protection. Give a little thanks to celebrate them and to, to feel for whatever hard, hardships they've gone through, basically because they've done it for these young people so that they can live. It has to be told on the emotional side so that they understand that uh, there was a reason for it. The reason for it was to, uh, is basically to protect our, uh, our families and our country. I'm really honored when the kids come out and want to shake my hand and say thank you for what you did. Remembrance Day is about remembering those who signed up and essentially wrote a check to say, I'm giving you everything. You see, as you look down, all of this love gathered around. I hope you hear what people say. I hope you know the role you play. You were my rock, you were my shield. The space you leave, no one can fill. You held a room, you cast a spell. You'll always be remembered well. And when my days have come and gone, I hope I've lived more right than wrong. I want to feel this love I see when I am gone. I hope there'll be someone to remember me. Though you're not here, not here with me, a part of you will always be. I'll hear your laughter, I'll see your smile I'll feel you near once in a while And when my days have come and gone I hope I've lived more right than wrong I want to feel this love I see when I am gone. I hope there'll be someone to remember me.
right and wrong. I want to feel this love I see when I am gone. I hope there'll be someone to remember, someone to remember me. Someone to remember me. Thank you, Selena. <clears throat> That's a personally touching song um, at my mother's funeral this summer. Thank you. Um, we're honored this morning to uh, gather together, and uh, we want to welcome you every year on November the 11th. Canadians pause to remember the men and women who have served and continue to serve our country in times of war, times of conflict, and peace. We've often taken for granted our Canadian values and institutions, our freedom to participate in cultural events and political events, and our right to live under a government of our choice. The Canadians who went off to war in distant lands went in the belief that the values and beliefs enjoyed by the Canadians were being threatened. They truly believed that without freedom, there can be no enduring peace, and without peace, there is no enduring freedom. I want to welcome our family members here of Shepherd Village, especially our veterans and their spouses, and I want to welcome our honored guests as well, and um, our member of Provincial Parliament is here with us. Our member of Parliament, I believe, is on her way, uh, Jean Yep. And uh, the Honorable Eris Babikian is the Conservative MP for Scarborough. He's here with us this morning at this point. And um, we're honored to have him, distinguished guest as well, and Reverend David Boyd. And Reverend David Boyd is a retired second left lieutenant and also Selena Caparella, um, and uh, Eric Tappenton, and also Derek Diffie will be participating in the ceremony today. I would like us, though, to uh, stand those who are able and join me in singing the national anthem.
At this time, I'm going to invite our honored guest, um, Eris Papikian. Usually there's a protocol in terms of uh, people, and, and you're here uh, with us at this time. And first, let me just introduce you a little bit. Um, the Honorable Eris Babikian is a conservative mem member of parliament for Scarborough Agent Court, a retired citizen judge, World Vision Canada Multicultural Council Ambassador, Chair of Levant Settlement Center, and board member of the National Ethnic Press and Media Council of Canada. He served in all of those areas. Scarborough Agent Court has been his home since 1991. His founding member and board member of the Wishing Well Community Association and founding member and board member of Willowdale Legal Aid Services as well. Um, and very importantly, he is a special guest and, and has um, been very instrumental in assisting us, the seniors here at Shepherd Village. He has been very supportive of this community over the years, and we appreciate him very, very much. Thank you. Would you come and share a few words? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor to be here today with you to commemorate Remembrance Day, to pay tribute to our veterans, not only the veterans, but also to their spouses, their children, for their sacrifices to make Canada what it is today, a beacon of freedom, a beacon of democracy around the world. And it is no wonder that people from all over the world, they look to Canada as a safe place, as a heaven, a place where they can get a new lease on life from persecution, dictatorship, massacres, genocides, cr war crimes, etc. And if it wasn't for our veterans, we will not be here. Through different wars, our veterans once again emphasized our true tradition, our values, protecting others, not only in our country, but all over the world. And as the lovely song Selena sang, our veterans are not forgotten. We remember them. We remember them because it is the least that we can do. I came to Canada as a refugee. And today, if it wasn't for those veterans who built this country, I will not be standing here in front of you. I came from war-torn country. My country, home country, saw a civil war for 15 years. I escaped the war. I came to Canada. I believed in the value of the Canadian people and our veterans. And I committed myself to this country. And I see so many of you who are truly appreciative what Canada gave them. And yes, unfortunately, the world is not perfect. We see, even in our own country, we see some troubles, but these people do not represent the Canadian people, the Canadian values, the Canadian traditions. It is you, me, and all of us together, we will stand up for what our veterans gave us. They passed the torch to us, and we need to protect that torch. We need to carry that torch and pass it to the next generation. And that's the message of today, Remembrance Day, so that 
the sacrifices of our veterans, it will not be wasted. It will not go in vain. So thank you very much for all of you for being here, for joining together to commemorate this very important day in our calendar. So thank you very much for all of you, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you join me today in singing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God? A mighty fortress is our God. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Psalm 33, verses 10 through 22, in the New Living Translation. The Lord frustrates the plans of the nations and thwarts all their schemes. But the Lord's plans stand firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. What joy for the nation whose God is the Lord, whose people he has chosen as his inheritance. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. From his throne, he observes all who live on the earth. He made their hearts so he understands everything they do. The best equipped army cannot save a king, 
nor is great strength enough to save a warrior. Don't count on your warhorse to give you victory. For all its strength, it cannot save you. But the Lord watches over those who fear him, those who rely on his unfailing love. He rescues them from death and keeps them alive in times of famine. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him, our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for, your, for our hope is in you alone. One of our veterans, Judith Comden, is coming to read the names of the living veterans who currently reside here in the gardens, the manor, the lodge, and the terrace. She will also read the names of all the veterans who once lived here at Shepherd Village, but have now passed on. Our first honored veteran is Judith Comden. Derek Duffy. Robert Gray. Robert Harker. Lloyd Hale. Marie Marston. Kenneth Preston. Terrence Keeley. Gordon Upton, Peter Williams, David Wise, Elmer Atkins, George Armstrong, James Arnett, Reuben Ostring, William Beals, Robert Brooks, June Budgel. Raymond Carpenter, Arthur Clymer, Peter Clement, John Colville, Agnes Cook. Lloyd Christie, Victor Crouch, William Kozer, Ralph Dance, Anthony David. Dowswell, Charles Edwards, Hector Edwards, William Eman, Donald Feltmate.
James Foster. Donald Fredlu. Niall Gillies. James Grant. John Gray. Ronald Green. Roy Hall. Helen Harris. Frank Hartshorn. Hamilton Hutchinson. George Irwin. Beatrice Jackson. Norman James. David Jerkins. William Cool. Staff. Newell Lawson. Margaret LaRue. James Little. Donald McKenzie. Roderick MacArthur, Rosemary MacArthur, Audrey McComb, Ellen McDermott, Ethel Maychuk, Joseph Meldrew. Margaret Menlove, John Midland, Joseph Mooring, Stephen Nikoforku, William Petrie. Eileen Pledger, Ronald Patnitok, Donald Ramsey, Ambrose Raymer, Toffel Reed, Clyde Richer. Evelyn Reamer, Ernest Robinson, James Sprill, Alfred Strudy, Donald Sutherland, Joseph Tedesco. William Tippett, Colin Walters, Con Warkington, Evelyn Warkington, Jack Warkington. Peter Warkington, Hewitt White, William Watterson, Philip Wild, Lauren.
Lawrence Williams, Ed Weismer, Charles Yates, Thank you, Nancy and Judith, for reading the names. Uh, a long list that goes back. Uh, if we were to read all of the names of all of the veterans, merchant marines, and their loved ones who've been a part of Shepherd Village since 1961, you would have to book off the day and maybe a little bit more. Uh, we are honored that you and they have chosen to make Shepherd Village their home. We're also honored, as mentioned earlier, to have our um, member of parliament with us here this morning. The Honorable Jean Yip is a devoted and committed community leader serving Scarborough Agent Court constituents as the liberal member of parliament. She's born in Scarborough, raised in Agent Court, and has deep roots, roots in the community Jean's mother and father immigrated to Canada. She grew up in agent court, surrounded by their values of hard work, family, and compassion. Values which she now instills in the three children she raised, raised with her late husband, the Honorable Arnold Chan. I would like to welcome Jean at this time. I understand getting through traffic is never fun in Toronto and you have a lot of events that you are part of this morning and today. So come and share with us and thank you, we're honored. Good morning, it was more because of my car battery died. <laughs> yes, um, so I'm Jean Yip, the member of parliament for Scarborough Aging Court. And uh, it's an honor to be here at Shepherd Village to commemorate Remembrance Day with you. On this day and always, we remember the brave Canadians who served this country. We pay tribute to Canadian armed forces around the world. As Canadians, we have a duty to remember and honor the sacrifices of all those who have served and those who continue to serve our country in times of war, military conflict, and peace. Since the first half of the 20th century with World Wars I and II, and in the operations and missions in the decades that followed, millions of Canadians have proudly served our country in uniform. Earlier this year, we marked the 80th anniversary of D-Day, and the Battle of Normandy when thousands of brave Canadians stormed Juneau Beach on the morning of June 6, 1944. 2024 also marks several other significant milestones for our men and women in uniform, including the 60th anniversary of the beginning of the peacekeeping mission in Cyprus, the 60th anniversary of the end of the first peacekeeping mission in the Congo, the 30th anniversary of the Canadian peacekeeping response to the genocide in Rwanda, and the 10th anniversary of the withdrawal of Canadian troops from Afghanistan. Today, we honour all those who have served, and we also honour the people who are currently in service as they continue to represent our cherished values of valour, dedication, and uh, duty. Today, Canadians across the country will gather to pay tribute to the fallen, our veterans, and our dedicated service men and women who continue to protect and preserve the freedoms we enjoy today. On behalf of the Federal Government of Canada, and as the Member of Parliament for Scarborough Aging Court, I salute all our veterans and active duty personnel. I would also like to take a moment to salute their families because when someone serves in Canada's military, their family serves with them. Your courage, dedication, and sacrifice are the pillars upon which Canada stands, lest we forget. Thank you.
It's my privilege to be with you this morning to read the poem in Flanders Fields written by John McCrae during the First World War. The background of this poem was on the screen earlier, so I won't repeat that. I'll also follow the poem with a response which was written by Robert Lillard in 1929. In Flanders' fields the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from fail, fa failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Rest in peace, ye Flanders dead. The fight that you so bravely led, we've taken up, and we will keep true faith with you who lie asleep. With each a cross to mark his bed and poppies blowing overhead, when once his own lifeblood ran red, so let your rest be sweet and deep in Flanders' fields. Fear not, that ye have died for naught, the torch ye threw to us we caught. Ten million hands will hold it high, and freedom's light shall never die. We've learned the lesson that ye taught in Flanders' fields. Today we remember. Thank you, Eric. It's my honor to introduce our guest speaker this morning, the Reverend David Boyd, retired second left lieutenant. Uh, David uh, was in Bible college with me, and that goes back at least 10 years, maybe, maybe even a little longer. Uh, and. Uh, and since then, he's been involved with um, starting our French Bible College. He was the academic dean of our Bible College as well here in uh, Peterborough. And uh, he also was the president of the Israel College of the Bible in Jerusalem and lived in Germany, taught in, uh, in, the, in Germany, as well as being in charge of our Euro-Asian ministry in Europe, and he's traveled uh, recently and taught in the Ukraine as well. Uh, I would like to welcome David to come and share with us at this time. Although we've been friends for many years, I think there is a vertical difference. And so when we're setting the microphone. And um, thank you very much to our MPP and our MP for your service to us as citizens of this country. Uh, it is also, mentioning anniversaries, it is the 100th anniversary of the Royal Canadian Air Force. And I would be amiss if as a, as a retired Air Force uh, officer, not to mention that as we go. I have um, had the privilege over the years to have worked with some of you and to have served our uh, church and people in Canada. I am very happy to be here and to spend some time with Brother Upton. He will always be Brother Upton to me. We had the opportunity of working together and privilege in the mid 80s and so uh, for four years at the national office in Toronto. So as you've heard, my life and ministry has taken me in a variety of places in different directions. All that tells you is I have a hard time holding down a job. 
And, uh, but when I returned to Canada, uh, because of uh, my parents getting older and we felt a need that we should serve them. And of all of my family, ministry and life had taken us far away. And so we came back to Canada in, uh, well, 10 years ago. And I felt that God wanted me to do something a little different. Uh, he wasn't finished with me yet. Uh, retirement or uh, leaving the mission field was not the end of life. And, uh, and I didn't feel that it was my job to take up the old jobs that I had before. That's for the next generation to do and the next generation beyond that. And, uh, and I pray for them. God bless them for the great work that they're doing. But as I looked around, I remembered that as a teenager, I had been both an Air Cadet and in the Air Force Reserve. And uh, wondering what I could do in the community rather than just doing something in the church. And so that led me to the crazy idea that I could enlist in the Canadian Armed Forces. I wasn't 18 anymore, as you can imagine. Um, but there was a place. So I filed my enlistment documents. It took three years of medicals and appointments and uh, pushback from bureaucrats who were hoping that I might quietly just go away. But if you know me, I don't quietly just go away. And, uh, and so I continued on and uh, was sworn in to the Royal Canadian Air Force at 63 years old. I think I might be the oldest recruit that we've ever had. And there's probably someone who beat me for that title, but uh, there wouldn't be many, that's for sure. Obviously, I am not a war-hardened veteran. My friends told me when they heard of my plans to enlist that if the Canadian Armed Forces really needed me, that meant we'd already lost the war. Whatever war it was, we'd already lost it. And I said, thank you for the vote of confidence uh, that you have given to me. But I have had the privilege of serving as a Christian inside the Armed Forces, not as an official chaplain, but as a Christian who is serving their comrades and uh, able to, to see some very amazing things happen during my short time of service. I did hit the compulsory retirement age. They told me, thank you very much. Um, and uh, they hired me back at lower pay at the Department of National Defense. So you know how it works, especially those of you who have served. In a day like today, and hearing the recitation of in Flanders Fields, and as I think of the act of remembrance that is so often uh, stated during these moments of remembrance, that every time I say, at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. And I am choked up just thinking of that even at this time. So we're obviously here for this purpose, to remember them. We wear the poppies as a sign that we have not forgotten them. We may have family and friends who served and some who perished during the war. But even more personal, there are many in this crowd that you have served and you have served in much more difficult situations than I, and this is personal and not just theoretical for you. My great-grandfather, Balser, was wounded in World War I, saving the life of a Russian soldier, and he was awarded a Medal of Honor by the Russian people for that act of bravery. Four of my uncles served in World War II, and they were all brothers from the same family. And the only reason there was four of them is the other two had rheumatic fever and could not serve at that time. During the war, somebody came along, and uh, there was some cause of celebration back home, and he gave my great-grandfather two cigars to, uh, to smoke for whatever it was. I don't know if it was the birth of a child or some holiday. 
And my great-grandfather simply said, I will smoke them when all of my boys return home. And even though one of them was on a ship that was torpedoed and sunk during the war, at the end of the war, all four of them came home. And my tough great-grandfather, sitting on his porch in his rocking chair, smoked two cigars in a row, grateful for the return of his sons. My grandfather on my mother's side also served, and um, as he prepared to go overseas, they took the soldiers and they did a, a trial uh, preparatory thing for possible gas attacks. And the government actually used real poison gas on our soldiers to get ready for what the enemy might do to them. And unfortunately, my grandfather was injured during that, um, that exercise and was not able to go overseas. And so he served in the medical corps during the war. But that injury to his lungs meant that he could never work at a regular job and eventually led to his fatal death with cancer. But before he passed on, he was able to share with me the love of Jesus, which changed the direction of my life. And so when we say we will remember them, there are many to remember. And as I've told these stories, it's not that my stories are more special than yours. You also have your stories, and they need to be remembered. The Bible actually commands us to remember and at times provides us with symbols and signs that will help us to do it. We remember that when we see the rainbow, that God has promised that never again would he destroy this world with a global flood. When we come to Passover and there are unleavened matzah bread with a little bit of lettuce and a, and a pile of horseradish on it, we are remembering God setting the people of Israel free from bondage in Egypt. And when we gather in our congregations on Sunday mornings and we are served the cup and the bread, they are signs that we have been called to remember. Remembering is a good thing. Remembering focuses us in our lives. We have been called and commanded by God to remember. But you know, remembering can also be painful. And so sometimes we remember that which is easy. We remember that which is traditional. We focus on certain things and not others. And as we know, war brings much death and suffering. And so it's important to remember. It's important to remember so that we don't fight unnecessary wars. And we as Canadian citizens, and those who serve in the military, trust our politicians to make good decisions as to what is a worthwhile cause in order to risk the lives of our people. As our MPP, Mr. Babi Kian, uh, shared with us, and I've had the privilege of visiting Armenia uh, several times, and I think that's your home country. We remember the, the terrible genocide that your people suffered just over 100 years ago. At times, we are called to serve. We don't serve because we are warmongers. We don't put a uniform on because we like to fight. In fact, it's just the opposite. We wear it to serve because we love family, friends, and our nations. And we want to protect them from such horrors. While I was living in Israel, my youngest daughter, um, or my second, or my first daughter, I should say, she, um, 
said, Dad, that she was thinking of joining the Navy. I don't know why Navy. It was maybe to do something different than her dad or despite me. I heard later was there was a handsome guy in the Navy and she liked the uniforms. But um, so we talked about it and I arranged for her to spend a day at the Canadian Armed Forces contingent of peacekeepers on the Syria Israel border. And so we went up to the border and we met with the commanding officer and she was able to ask her questions and she ate in the officer's mess, was treated really nice. And, uh, and then uh, in the evening, I took her for dinner. And while we were having dinner together, I asked her a simple question. Have you thought about death? And she said, yes, dad, I have. And I am ready to die for my country. I said, you misunderstand the question. Dying for your country is an easy thing. Someone will do it to you. You don't have to do anything. They will take your life. I said, the real question is, are you ready to kill for your country? And that is a hard question. And so when we gather to remember, we focus quite often on those who didn't make it, those who laid down their life, those who let the government cash that blank check. And we honor them for that. And their sacrifice is meaningful to us. But we also remember those who survived. Those who stood beside their fallen comrade. Those who were obliged to take the lives of others. Those are often ones easy to forget. We see them, but we don't recognize them. They can be living in the streets. They may be battling drug and alcohol addictions. They might look normal, but at nights they're awoken by terrors and memories that haunt them. Or we may actually attend one of their funerals because too many of them have given up hope and have taken a shortcut out of their suffering. We need to remember those who survived. It is hard to take a life. And although it's necessary at times, there is a price to pay because we were not created by God for that purpose. But sometimes we have to serve in that way. It's hard to see the effects of war day after day. It's hard to feel guilty about surviving when your best friend is sent home in a casket draped with a flag. One of my four uncles that I mentioned earlier, when uh, he came back to Canada, he didn't talk to the family much about his experiences in the war. And if you know anything of veterans, you will know that that is likely the story of every single veteran. They'll tell you about their friends and their comrades. They'll tell you about some silly experience they had along the way, but they won't tell you what they won't tell you. He um, came back from the war, a broken man, and he spent too many nights at the Legion Hall with his comrades and cheap beer. And at that time, that was the only medication made available by the government that did not know how to help traumatized soldiers. In my younger and more foolish days, you know, those days when I had all the answers to all the questions, and I suffered from a little case of um, self-righteousness, I disdained such behavior. Then I got a taste of real life. I grew up 
and I began to understand. My uncle returned to Holland to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the liberation of that country, and he took his wife with him. And during the memorial services, the actual services, he collapsed in absolute anguish and pain as all of the memories that he had been repressing for 50 years resurfaced in his mind and his heart and almost destroyed him completely. Totally broken, he was hospitalized. You see, PTSD is, is not new. It's just a new name for something that has been going on for a long time. And many in our military can suffer deeply and longly from that. And so that's why I'm saying we need to also remember those who survived. We as Canadians are responsible to remember these ones, to care for them, and to see them when everyone else walks by, and to make sure that our institutions provide for them. As Christians, we have a mandate to bind up the wounds of the one lying beside the road. We have good news to share, along with love, grace, and peace that we can bring to those who are thus tormented. Christ's death provides us with life and hope, even as our fallen comrades provide us freedom and peace for our country. It's not all doom and gloom. There is good news, new life, and a new way for all of us. Today, as we remember those who fell, can we also remember those who returned? Remember, not just once a year, but every day, at the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Thank you. Thank you, David, for those meaningful words touching our heart. We, um, we are very close to um, the 11 o'clock. And uh, the last post signifies the end of the day, a military camp, and a remembrance that day. It's the observ observance symbolizing death as well. It will be followed by a moment of silence and then reveille, and, uh, which is signaling the beginning of the day in military camp. And in the Remembrance Day observances, it's a reminder that the memory of the dead lives on. And I like, as David has said, that we remember those who live today as well, and what they have done and served as well. For us Christians, it's a reminder that life triumphs over death through our Lord.
Before we move on to the next part of our ceremony this morning, I would like to invite our veterans, merchant marines, our allies, and loved ones. Would you stand, those who are here with us? If you're able to, if you would stand, Lloyd and others, veterans, merchant marines, spouses, I have a letter from a Jewish friend in Toronto. I'd like to read it to you. On this Remembrance Day, we're reminded of the immense sacrifices made by brave individuals like yourselves who fought valiantly for the Canadian values of freedom, democracy, and peace. On this solemn occasion, we reflect on the profound impact of your service and the legacy of your courage you have left for us all. Over the past year, the Jewish people of Toronto have not felt safe in the city we call home. Rising anti-Semitism in our country has left us feeling deeply unsettled. And sadly, we're seeing in our city is all too familiar with the history of the Jewish people. Our grandparents came to Canada to flee the persecution from Europe or as the refugees following World War II, they survived the concentration camps and hid their identities as Jews. They escaped pogroms targeting Jews in Iraq. For these reasons, we understand the importance of freedom and sacrifice. We feel it is crucial to honor our vet veterans who fought for principles of freedom and equality. Your bravery and selflessness have paved the way for the peaceful and inclusive society we strive to uphold today. On this Remembrance Day, we pay tribute to our veterans and their families as we remember their sacrifices and to reaffirm our commitment to preserving the values they fought so bravely to defend. May God bless you, lest we forget. Respectfully, Danny and Aaron Peters. You may be seated. I hear the guns, I feel the fire. My last breath, my spirit flies And I see the faces of my friends Fighting till the end So many fearless hearts I feel their courage and their pain Their life should never be from heaven's gate, a perfect view, the plain and simple truth is lighting up the dawn.
The ceremony is almost coming to an end. Uh, I would invite you to stand and say, sing God Save the King with me before we invite Selena to come back and minister to us in song. seated. Selena, it, let's welcome Selena as well again. What a lovely voice. Must have been cold there in my shadow to never have sunlight on your face. You were content to let me shine, that's your way. You've always walked a step behind. So I was the one with all the glory While you were the one with all the strength A beautiful face without a name for so long A beautiful smile to hide the pain did you ever know that you're my hero? And everything I would like to be. I could fly higher than an eagle. For you are the wind beneath my way. It might have appeared to go unnoticed But I had it all here in my heart I want you to know I know the truth Of course I've known it I would be nothing without you Did you ever know that you're my hero? And everything I would like to be I could fly higher than an eagle For you are the wind beneath my way Did I ever tell you you're my hero? You're everything, everything I wish I could be. And I could fly higher than an eagle. For you are the wind beneath my way. You are the wind beneath my wings. Oh, the wind 
beneath my wings you 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 are the wind beneath my wings fly 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 away you let me fly so high oh you So high, I almost touch the sky. Thank you, thank you, thank God for you, the wind beneath my wings. I want to thank our honored guests for being with us this morning, Honorable Jean Yip and Eris Bibigin, Eric Tappenton, thank you for being with us, David Boyd, also want to thank Derek for being with Selena, please don't let this be the last time. Um, we will make sure to have you back for a concert. I. Um, the rest of the afternoon would be fine. Uh, so uh, we, uh, beautiful, beautiful songs. Thank you. Let's just bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Father, we remember. We remember those who sacrificed their lives we remember those who stayed home and worked so that others could go on their behalf and defend this country and democracy around the world. There are those who are fighting for democracy today, and there are those who are working for peace. And we ask your blessing upon them. We ask that they would be successful and that we would find peace. In this day, we thank you for our leadership. We ask that you would be and watch over them, be with them and watch over them, and that you would give them wisdom and guidance as they lead, both in our cities, in our communities, in our provinces, in Canada, and around the world. We pray for all of our leaders we commend them to you and that your purpose would be done on earth as it is in heaven. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, give you peace. May you feel his smile upon your life. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today. I would invite our veterans, if you would like, if uh, uh, Jean and Eris uh, I have, have time this morning and get some, they would like to get some pictures with you as, uh, as the rest of us. So feel free, you're dismissed for the service, but those who would like to remain for a picture, uh, especially our veterans and uh, the loved ones and allied forces, please remain. Mm -hmm.